So that's one way to wake yourself up. All right, good morning, guys. It's just gone about nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning here at Herald Bight. Today is actually my birthday, so I had a bit of a sleep in, taking it real easy. I didn't go to bed till after midnight. The tide's reached its highest point right now, so it was coming in quite rapidly up until about 15 minutes ago, and now it's sort of relaxed. And what that means for me is now is the best time for me to look at getting the boat in the water as well. I'll leave that there for now. I'm gonna get things packed up. I'm not even gonna cook up a brekkie. I'm not that hungry. Uh, I've just grabbed myself a muesli bar. I'm gonna chow down on this and then we'll head up the beach probably and have a look around there. If it's no good, and then we'll come back down here and set up camp and get out there on the water. All right guys, so I've just pulled up to the start of the track here at Herald Bight, right as you enter onto the beach here. And from my experience last time, I didn't have any issues whatsoever launching here. So I'm gonna do the same thing again today. I've got the recovery tracks ready to go as well. I've just sorted out the boat. Everything's all good on there, so we'll get down and we'll start moving around. The other thing I should mention is, you probably worked it out by now, but because I got these microphones the other day, what it means for me is I can actually talk to you guys from inside the cabin and things like that. So while I'm reversing back, you're hearing what I'm talking about and experiencing that. I think it's just going to add a whole new level to sort of what goes on with all my solo filming. So I'm going to go sit in the cab, but I'll be talking you through it as we go. All right, so we're almost at the water. I want to stay straight. Now the tide's actually moving back out now, which isn't ideal. As long as I don't take too long. Just gonna watch what the trailer does here and make sure it doesn't sink. try and knock this off a couple of times because I don't really want to get the ute off into the water but I also need water under the boat when it comes off to there we go oh <sighs> that was hard work It doesn't really matter which way I go about it. Either way, I've either got to come back for the ute or I've got to come back for the boat. So I'm just gonna leave the ute parked up there. Trailer's still hitched on. Boat's in the water now, but because the tide's going out and it'll move out probably about another 100 meters between now and low tide. What that means to me is I'll chuck me, me slides on because there's a um, few cone shells, octopus, all that sort of thing get around here. So what that means for me is I'm going to actually go start the tinny up, drive it around to where I'm going to move my camp to. There was a few young lads over there that have just left a minute ago. I asked them if I could take their spot if they're leaving. They said, yep, all sweet. So I'm going to go set up over there. Looks good for me to get set up and make a little home for the next three days. Get the boat over, leave it anchored out, and then I'll walk back over and bring the ute over. We'll get set up properly. Then we'll head out and go for a fish. Two stroke yammy, loves it. All right, I'll be the first to admit I could have done a much, much better job with the way I launched this boat to set on my own, but I was also being a bit hesitant and uh, trying to take it easy on how I did it just in case things did go wrong. So I probably made it a little bit harder in the end if I'd, rather than if I just staunched it as if I had a couple of people here. Anyway, we're in the water now, so motor's running. Oh shit, I'm just about on the beach. This is the best feeling in the world. This feeling right here, getting your boat in the water, being on a little beach, middle of nowhere. I thought it was, I was actually worried for the school holidays at the moment. I was worried it's gonna be a bit busy here. But everyone else seems to go to all the other campsites and this one gets left alone, so. All I'm doing now is driving from there to there. 
anchor the boat up, move the ute over, and we'll get set up camp, make a little home for the week, for the next three nights. It's gonna be a bloody good day and a bloody good week. So I'm actually only anchored about probably 30, 40 meters out right now. But that's because I plan on going fishing within the next couple of hours, so the tide might be super low. But I'll judge it when I'm coming back in, but there's a fair chance I might actually have to leave the boat probably twice as far out as it is right now to make sure it's still got water under it when I wake up tomorrow or whatever and want to go fishing. Drop the transducer down now so that's ready to go for when I come back out. The 40 Yami, the Dozer. Right here's where these other fellas were camping just a minute ago. They've just taken off, so that's left me a good sandy spot, clear clear patch to set up camp, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm about to come park up here. Gonna pull the nose in there, gonna drive into here and leave the boat trailer there. Unhitch the trailer, leave some space behind the back of the ute. That's level for the ute there. The awning's gonna come out here. Then I'm just gonna shovel some level dirt for the swag to go on. Of that, eh? What I don't want to do is hit the boat trailer behind me. Oh, how yeah, soft that is. Probably could have worked that out. Perfect. All the hard work's done now. I've set up camp, everything's all sorted out. So I'll give you a quick look around at what we're dealing with. This is actually the first time that I've ever had these sidewalls in one of my videos because I only bought them one camp trip ago. So I've used them once, best thing I ever bought. So they've added onto the Batwing awning. Swag just tucks in there. Completely shelters me from the wind and you just set it up so that it faces what direction you think's best. So. The wind's coming in on a southwesterly direction, which is coming straight into here, so it just blows straight over the top. I'm completely sheltered. And then obviously on top of that, you want to factor in your view and the sunlight and things like that too. So I've still got this view from inside of here. There's the Doz chilling out. Swag's there. So I'll probably just pull my camp chair straight over here onto this mat, and then that way I can just chill out. I can still look at the water. Uh, <laughs> pretty much everything's just perfect. Like this, this is honestly the best place in the world, I think. And I almost don't, I know I said that I was gonna go over to Bottle Bay in a few days, which I still think I am because I have to do it. I've never been over there. But it's just one of those places to me that's so nice and so good just the way it is. I almost don't wanna leave. I don't feel like I need to. But what's important about this episode, remembering that it is actually my birthday, so it's just gone lunchtime. I've got my favourite beer, my personal favourite is Asahi Black. But it's quite expensive for a beer, it's like $70 for 18 stubbies, I don't actually give you 24. But well worth the penny, it's my birthday, so I've splurged. I've got these and then I'm just about to get into cooking, which I'll show you guys what I'm cooking for that as well. which. Will probably make a bit of sense being my birthday, but look at that. If you've been looking for the perfect excuse to crack a beer during this episode, now's the time to do it. Have one with me for my birthday, even if this video doesn't go up a week or two after. It's nice to have me in your thoughts. <coughs> so, cheers to that, guys. Thirsty work doing what I was just doing. I'll sip on this one and I'm going to start cooking. So it wouldn't be a birthday without a birthday cake. So what I decided to do for myself this time, I've never done it before, I don't even know if it'll work, but I'm gonna set the Weber up to make it back into an oven. 
And then I've gone and brought this chocolate mud cake mix here. I've bought a cake tin. I brought my mixing bowl along with me. I've got some eggs, butter, the whole work. Whatever is required to make a chocolate mud cake with the icing as well. So that's what we're going to do. And it's actually worked out pretty good because I don't have a super sweet tooth. But I'm still going to eat probably this cake over the week. But I've also just bumped into one of my workmates who said he'd be up here. He's camping further down the beach, probably about 500 meters away with his wife and kids. But what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna pick him up in the tinny at some stage or he's gonna come over here because he actually sunk his jet ski last night. He just said he left it in the water and then woke up this morning and it was in the water. So something's cracked apparently somewhere. So I'm gonna bake this cake and then we're gonna get out for a fish later this afternoon, he and I, and we'll go see what we can catch. I'm gonna preheat that now. We'll mix up the cake and then we'll see if it actually bakes it okay. So we're gonna get about four tablespoons worth of butter into here. This, this recipe said to use a wooden spoon to mix the mixture inside the bowl there. And I thought there was no way that I was gonna have a wooden spoon inside of my ute. But I guess the beautiful thing about the organization of some women being my ex-girlfriend is that she actually put a wooden spoon in the canopy so thank you for that if you ever get around to watching this because that just came in real handy because us blokes we like to keep it real simple otherwise i would have been mixing up the whole cake mix with this bad boy right here so that's melting i'm actually really really excited to make this mix eggs water and butter into a mixing bowl go in. Here comes the melted butter. Doesn't seem like that much once you actually melt it down. Three quarters of a cup of water. It's actually smelling quite nice already too. Can you tell I'm not a chef? And so this one here I need to spray with some oil to put flour in there. I wasn't even gonna bring flour on this trip either. This was just by chance because I thought about it. obviously catching fish. All right, anyone who loves bacon can tell me how much I've just messed that up, who knows? This cake mix looks like cake mix, so I'm pretty impressed by that. Let's have a taste test. Okay, there's my mud cake mix in the cake pan ready to go, so. That's just going to go straight into here on the Weber at hot. I don't know the actual temperature. I'm going to close that for about 45 minutes, I reckon. So I'll check back in then with that one. And then I've also got to make the icing, so I'll do that next. Two and a half tablespoons of butter, one and a half tablespoons of water. Take about five seconds to melt that butter. Ten, ten, ten. Pour this straight into the saucepan. All right. So there's the chocolate icing for the cake. I might have made it a little bit too soon, but I can't see it going too hard. And that's probably got about 10 minutes left up there. I'll let that stand, get this on it, and then I'll let it cool. I'll have something to eat. I haven't even eaten breakfast yet or anything, actually. So I had a banana and a muesli bar. That's it for the day so far. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon now. Then we're just going to rip straight into a bit of cake, I suppose. But... That's the beauty of it being your birthday. If you want cake on your birthday, you can have cake on your birthday. That's not a bad backdrop here to be cooking up a birthday cake on your own now, is it? Not bad. Not bad. What I was going to say is I don't have a tea towel. I don't have a tea towel to take this off properly. So I used two spatulas. That should get it. Balance it. Sit it down here. Looks like a chocolate mud cake to me, so now, with that being there... Alright guys, there it is, 26 years old, 
chocolate mud cake cooked on the beach, baked on the beach I should say, here at Shark Bay, Herald Bar on my own. So as much as this is sort of a piss take in me baking the cake and being out here, um, I really do just want to say thank you and I really am grateful for everyone in the whole social media and particularly the YouTube community who's getting around me and everything that I'm doing lately. Uh, it feels really good. I didn't really know where I wanted to go with it all when I first started doing it a year ago, but now I actually have a bit of a pathway that I've got in mind and to see people really rallying behind me and making it feel like it's all worthwhile is really, really cool. So, you know, I've just baked the cake out here. Um, I thought it was a bit of a funny idea. I am going to enjoy it. I'm going to share it with people if they want any as well, anyone that comes past sort of things. But I never would have thought, you know, if you if you did ask me one, two, three, four, you know, any amount of years ago, what would you be doing for your 26th birthday? I would never have thought in a million years I'd be spending it my, on my own on a beach in the middle of nowhere, basically. But that's what I'm doing. And to be honest, it feels really, really good. I'm really, really happy. It's so peaceful. I'm unwinding. Only one day into it, I've still got so much to do. We're only going to get started with the fishing and stuff today. So, you know, for the next week, everything's just going to be happening. And then I've got at least three days here. So now that I'm set up and bunkered down, I can really start focusing on all the, the finer things like the fishing, getting the drone up in the air, catching cooks, all that sort of stuff. But for now, I'm going to cut myself a slice of this. I'll give you guys a look at it as well. And then uh, I'm expecting my mate Bryn to come back past uh, in a short while and he's going to come past and then we'll work out what we're going to do for fishing this afternoon But the tinnies behind me, we're definitely going to go load that up and shoot out and that'll be in this episode and I cannot wait Lost me damn cake Where the hell have I actually put it? Oh, it's behind the camera Not much point me bringing a uh, cake with candles if I'm not going to actually light the candles and blow them out, so... 26 years old. Maybe I'm two years old because that one's already gone out. Let's go again. <laughs> Alright guys, so this scene was meant to be about me blowing the candles out in celebration of turning 26 years old, but what it's actually going to be is a a Woolies candle review now because these candles will not stay alight so I can't actually blow them out for you guys on the camera. So pity that. Anyway, big thanks. We're hanging out at Shark Bay. Everything's sweet it does. You know, and as much as it seems like I'm not really doing it, I am hanging out with you guys for my birthday. I've got the camera going. That's what we're here for. Just doing the solo thing. Cooked myself a mud cake. I'll grab my knife. I'll actually, uh, Cut myself off a piece, so I think. See if it's any good. A bit crunchy on the outside, I think I can tell. Ooh, bit of extra crunch on the bottom. I don't know if that's an actual thing. It's like a pizza base. Not bad on top. I don't know about that bottom, but I think that's going to go. Oh, it's actually all right. Well, there you have it, guys. That's done, so. I've actually got, because I've got my 12 volt fridge and stuff here, I can just put glad wrap over this and chuck it straight in the fridge. So next thing that's going to happen is I might eat a little bit of lunch, so I'm not just smashing down a whole cake for my lunch, and then shortly after we're going to go out for a fish. Alright guys, we're getting a bit late into the Arvo now, it's just gone about half four, but my mate Bryn finally came back past, he's a workmate of mine, he's with his family, but he's just come past, we've just pushed the boat further back out into the water, so it's got water underneath it again, so what I'm going to do is go jump into it, drive over, pick him up, and we're going to drive off and go see if we can find some fish to close out the day. Uh, I'm not going to go overboard with explaining what we're up to on this one. This one's more about just he and I going to wet a line quickly. We've got probably another hour of sunlight before we have to call it quiz. I haven't tied any rigs or anything, so we're just winging this one entirely. And then tomorrow in the next episode, I'll get right into the details and I'll get out for a solo fish and, and really go hard on that one. But this one, just an enjoyment one. We'll see what we can go find. Anyway, I'll go out to the water. Now, we are just pushing the boat out a second ago because it, the tide's gone out a little bit too far and it's sitting on rocks. And there's a cone shell through here. I don't know what they're poisonous for or anything, but apparently they're not real safe to be around. Um, but I've got my slides on. This first little fang's going to be a good one because it'll 
warm the boat back up for the whole trip and then also wash all the mud and stuff off it that it's got stuck to the side of it from the drive in here. Driven in as shallow as I can. Here comes Bryn and his boy now. Hope you don't mind if brought the young fella along. No, nah, no, nah, more the merrier, mate. I've been promising him catch a pinky. He'll catch a shark with that overhead reel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that thing will stop a great white. How you going, buddy? What's your name? Mason. Mason, I'm Rowan. Nice to meet ya. You ready to catch a fish? Yep. Do you watch YouTube? Do you watch YouTube at all? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I do. Do you want to be on YouTube, mate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can get on you. I'll, I'll put this part in there if you catch a pinky, all right? If you get a big pinky, you make the cut. And then we, and then we got proof that it was premeditated. <laughs> uh, if you want, you can stick stick that one piece one in the rod holder at the very back, so it's on the bit of an angle. <laughs> oh, he's on! All right, first. Oh, first drop on some yellowfin whiting. I've got a fish. It's either a pink here or a mackie, but I got it down low. Someone called it. Yeah, it's pink. I think. I think it's a nice one. Oh, that's a good size. Right. It's a great size, and I've got nibbles too. Straight off the bat, first drop. Ooh, might oh, be a little under that, that one. Under, yeah. <laughs> oh, I reckon he's on. Oh, so it's going to be close, man. So, <laughs> so we'll give him a measure. He's going to be bigger than 500. Yeah, he's on. He's on. Up we go. That's a good size. All right. This, this one's in. Oh, this one's bang, bang on 50. Keep going. Keep going. Here, Dad, do you want to net it? I'll get the, I'll get the shot. Go Mason. Keep going mate, keep going. Go oh, Mason. Going, You're the man mate. <laughs> what a moment. How's this? Look at that. Go Mason, go son, go. Hey. <laughs> yeah boy. Oh, that's huge. There we that's go. Huge. There we go. Here he comes. Keep coming, keep coming. Good pinky. Good pinky. There's two. There's two. Oh, the double. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. One's a keeper for sure, too. <laughs> just, uh, I wouldn't even bother with the net on that. Just gonna have to wait up. Wait. Just lift from the leader. Lift from the leader. Don't, don't bend the, don't bend the rod. There you go. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you, baby. Up with a slow mo.
wanna mess me up Trippin' like I'm Jimmy at Woodstock And I drive me around in your red Ford Shivers down my spinal guys <laughs> so that's gonna be this episode done and dusted uh where do i start with that one <laughs> this has been the craziest time um so this is my first full day on this trip and i've got another six to go is the plan spent my birthday solo that was the idea just do my own thing and it's worked out to be probably the best birthday i think i've ever had in my life so <laughs> As you would have just seen, I just ended up giving one of the smaller pinkies to a couple that were fishing on the beach because I caught this bigger one, which I'll give you another look at. But I didn't actually need two pinkies because I was, I was happy with the smaller one, but then I caught this bigger one, but this one couldn't be released because he swallowed the hook quite deep. And it is a he actually, he's got a quite a lumpy head. Um, so what I ended up doing, keeping this one for myself and then I gave a smaller one to a couple that were on the beach so they're happy they've got a nice fresh pinky for dinner and I've got mine too so I'm actually going to fillet him up and then I'll cry back the fillets and then leave them in ice so because there's a nice slurry there they'll be cry backed and they'll stay fresh all week so I can just eat them whenever willy-nilly uh, and I don't plan on actually trying to freeze any fish until probably the second last day or something and then that way I can keep my Waco down to a freezer and maintain it because otherwise I won't be able to keep it at that. It'll drain the battery over the next five or six days way too quickly unless I've got consistent sunlight which probably isn't going to happen. But otherwise yeah that was an awesome time. Shout out to Bryn and uh, his son Mason for coming out on the boat with us. That was good fun, everything worked out so perfectly. It was quite a long way. It took us about half an hour to get over there and half an hour back to where we just fished to get out of the uh, restricted zones for the pink snapper at this time of the year. But we got out and it only took us 20 minutes and we came home choking with fish. So that really could not have been a better outcome. So I'm not gonna show me filleting this fish up and I'm not gonna show you how I cook it or anything. It's just gonna be pretty standard, probably fry it up in some oil, do some fish wraps, but I just want to chill out for the rest of the evening tonight, crack another beer and just chill out on my own. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll wrap this episode up here. Heaps more to come in the following ones. Like I said, another week of this to follow. So thanks heaps for watching this one, guys. I really, really do appreciate it. I've had the best time of my life and I hope that this gets portrayed the way it came through for me because it was awesome. So I will see you next time.